Ken Baxter joins us in our breakfast studio. Ken, welcome. Good morning. Uh, Ken Baxter, is a federal takeover of the funding of public hospitals the right way to start when we look to try to reform the hospital and health system? In relation to funding, in principle, the answer is probably yes. In relation to the individual states and its implementation, the answer is maybe. You've got such a contrast in the state of the health systems or hospital systems in each of the states. The simplest way would be to say to Victoria, which is clearly top of the class, continue with the system you've got, which has a proper governance system, proper relationships between central agencies, Department of Health and the hospitals, and then turn to New South Wales, which is probably at the worst end in an appalling state in terms of the administration and Queensland improving but not far behind and have the sort of intervention that the Prime Minister is supposed to be talking about. So in a sense, are you saying a two-tier system where some states, namely New South Wales and Queensland, the funding would all be managed by this regional health authority the Prime Minister is going to announce, we think, today, and some states would carry on as they are with their own state bureaucracies? That's probably the most likely transitional arrangements. The real difficulty is, of course, you already have two layers of bureaucracy in New South Wales. You have a huge head office, you have area health services, and you then have relationships with large public hospitals. And on the edge of this, you have a number of Catholic hospitals, which are run as if they were public hospitals. Let's take a break it down for most people probably don't understand how it works in Victoria, or if it works in Victoria, but can you explain what you think is going right in the Victorian health system that should be modelled? Well, I think what's going right is that after a lot of hard work by both the current Labor governments and the preceding coalition government, they got the governance structures right, they simplified the accountability arrangements, they introduced what's called case mix or activity-based funding, and they had rigorous performance agreements between the central agencies, which is Premier and Cabinet and Treasury, the Department of Health and the individual hospital boards and their governance probably is top of the class right around the world. What's it delivered for patients, that system, in your What view? it is delivered for patients, if... Uh, because there was criticism of the case mix model when it was first discussed federally. Oh, there, there's great resistance to it amongst some of the hospital administrators and amongst the medical profession because it starts to measure performance of people within the hospital system itself. But the real advantage it's delivered is lower waiting times, improved hospital efficiency, and almost proceeding to the sort of uh, yes minister situation where the most efficient hospital is an empty one. What about the uh, criticism of the case mis- mix funding um, that it can encourage, quote, skimming, which is hospitals pushing patients out the door more quickly and then sort of pocketing the savings? That's always a risk, but if the governance arrangements and the performance review arrangements are well established and properly implemented, the risk of that is very, very low. Now, I could be completely wrong, but it would seem unlikely to me that the Prime Minister will put into place something for some states and something for other states. Already, I think the Victorian Premier, John Brumby, uh, thinks that's true too, because he's complaining pretty loudly and longly at the moment about this. If the government does move to hand over funding to regional health authorities... What is a problem with that in your view? The real problem is, first of all, the states don't trust or respect the Commonwealth Department of Health, that the Commonwealth does not have a good history of implementation. If the Prime Minister is going to effectively put in place his model or what's said to be his model, it will need to be managed by people out of the Prime Minister's Department and Treasury. And history, both in this country and in the United States and the UK, has shown very, very clearly that implementation of health reform is a major political minefield. It will make the ETS and the insulation uh, problems pale into insignificance. Isn't the plan, though, to have not the federal health department running it, but these regional health authorities to evolve there? As yet, and the Prime Minister hasn't delivered the plan, there's no clarity about that. But if it's based on previous models that have been developed by the federal government, there will inevitably be a substantial federal bureaucratic presence. And what about the state bureaucracies that are large and there, and you've been quite critical of them in the past, Um, state and federal, I think you've been quite critical of. You talked about the long-standing rancour and sloth within the state and federal health bureaucracies. Would those state bureaucracies still be there and what would they be doing? Well, that becomes a real political issue for Premier Keneally and her health minister. 
it, it would be very doubtful if between now and the New South Wales election, the New South Wales government would be prepared to diminish by, say, 20 or 30,000 people, uh, the bureaucrats in their own head office and their area health services. But under Kevin Rudd's plan, is there still a place for state health bureaucracies, can you uh, see? A very diminished uh, role for them. Uh, if the plan is as described in the press, the likelihood is that those bureaucracies would be circumvented. It's 17 minutes to eight on breakfast. Our guest this morning is Ken Baxter, who is a former top bureaucrat in both Victoria and New South Wales, so quite well placed to comment on federal-state relations, you might think. Ken Baxter, you've advocated in the past devolution of responsibilities as close as possible to the users of health services. Now, it seems to me that that is what the Prime Minister is talking about here with his regional health authorities. Or would you go even further? Are you a fan, for instance, of the plan um, put out there by opposition leader Tony Abbott for these local authorities to well, run hospitals? Well, no, I'm, I'm not a fan of what has been put out by um, the leader of the opposition. Uh, what I am a fan of is the Victorian system where the government is actually involved in the appointment of the boards and there are and it comprises business people, comprises clinicians. It's the sort Would of... Would they be hospital boards or regional boards? No, they'd be hospital boards and that's where I think the accountability needs to rest with. So to use the phrase, when the buck stops, it's got to be with the chairman of the hospital board who may well be a doctor or may well be a, a non-medical person and the chief executive. And then if it goes further... It's the performance agreement that exists between the board and the government, in the case of the Victorian government, which enables the government ultimately to have the threat of stepping in and administering the hospital if it's not working properly. OK, so just finally, we don't know the detail of what the Prime Minister is looking at, but do you think it is a plan that is aimed to get better performance out of our, out of our hospitals or to save money? I think it's probably a combination of the two. Um, I think the Prime Minister recognises that if he doesn't get improved performance, particularly in New South Wales and Queensland, he's got an electoral nightmare on his hands. You've lived and breathed um, health and state and Commonwealth bureaucracies over, over the years. Do you think the states will buy this? Do you think the Prime Minister will get the states to play ball? I think that several of the states will, but I think that the Victorians will probably dig their toes in, followed by the South Australians and possibly the Western Australians. And just very briefly, do you have any advice for the Prime Minister? What do you see as the key trick to making this work, the Prime Minister's plan work? Is to get somebody like, uh, first of all, to get somebody in his own private office who is old and grey-haired and who understands the risk, somebody like David Pennington from Victoria or Mike Keating, a former head of department, and then to make sure the responsibility rests for implementation with his own department, not the Department of Health. Ken Baxter, thanks very much for joining us on Breakfast. Ken Baxter is the former head of Department of Premier and Cabinet in New South Wales and in Victoria.